Hi everybody, I'm Zoe Murphy. I'm an enthusiastic furniture and textile designer from Margate who loves getting people interested in things to do with making textiles, having fun and celebrating each other. I'm organising my own project this coming spring to do all of those things and it's called the Cheer Quilt Project. I'm working with my community in Thanet, that's Broadstairs, Margate, Ramsgate and lots of other smaller villages, in getting them together to spend time with each other making celebration quilts with their favourite or memorable fabrics while they reflect on the things that they want to remember and celebrate over the last few years. Now because quilting itself has this long history of being largely but not exclusively the work of women, made to keep loved ones warm and make use of domestic fabrics, it's a huge cultural motif for femininity, intimacy, sharing and care. I'm doing this great big community quilting project in collaboration with the Power of Women Festival in Thanet in order to celebrate heritage about quilts and share it with the people around me. But it's a project that has an invite for every gender or identity to get involved wherever they're based. So what is a celebration quilt? Well, it's this term in the world of quilt making that refers to any quilt made to mark an occasion. Celebration quilts, or memory quilts, help us commemorate the important events in our lives. They're traditionally made to give someone for a birth or a wedding, or created to mark a special occasion in history or the life of a person or a people. Sometimes they're happy, sometimes they're serious, but these quilts become treasured keepsakes. Our celebration quilts that we make are going to focus on joy and hope. After the last recent few years that we've had and might be about to have, it's definitely a time to surround ourselves with reminders of all of the good bits using our quilts. Okay, but what is a quilt? You think you know, but perhaps you don't. A quilt is a padded blanket that is made up of three layers. A quilt top, these are often patchwork layers that you might think are a quilt, a fluffy and squidgy wadding in the middle, and then a backing cloth on the bottom. They're all sewn together in this big sandwich using decorative stitching or quilting and then the finished object is known as the quilt. People often think this is a quilt. Technically though it's not, it's just patchwork but so many quilt tops are made using patchwork pieces as a way to use up old fabric scraps that sometimes the two get confused. And that's okay. This is a patchwork and when it's quilted together with wadding in the middle and a backing cloth on the bottom, then it will be a quilt. Quilts are warm and fuzzy and they keep people feeling safe and loved and can be such a big effort to make that people often come together in communities to make them. That's one of the reasons I knew I wanted to do quilts for this project, the community aspect of them. But quilts aren't just about keeping warm and cosy. The nature of chatty and social humans means that we've been telling stories with quilts for the longest time. This is an image of the Tristan quilt, part of a collection of bed coverings from Sicily, one of which is housed in the V&A in London. The Tristan quilt is one of the earliest blanket style quilts that has ever been found on record, and it's nearly 700 years old. Basically from the time when the Black Death had just ended and the Crusades had just finished. It shows a medieval love story similar to Romeo and Juliet called Tristan and Isolde. For most of history, quilts have been made by hand by men, women, soldiers, farmers' wives, wealthy ladies, school children, prisoners, political activists, parents. They would make quilts for fun, to pass the time, to keep their families warm, and they would quilt to send messages or to celebrate. And for very large parts of history, people would make quilts to earn money and make a living. As you can imagine, making a great big quilt can be hard and very repetitive work if it's just one person doing all of that tiny stitching on a great big object. People in the past for hundreds of years have had quilting socials called a quilt bee. This is where quilts will be stretched out over frames and many members of your community would come together to help each other make their quilts. In some places these occasions were almost like a town event and a big party where food would be served, music would be played, quilters could chat over the wooden quilting frame that their work was stretched out over and the children would play underneath the stretched quilt listening to the stories that were being told by the people above. So forget going to the pub or the park, at a quilting bee you got to spend time with everybody, hear about their experiences and make something all at the same time. Because of the way that quilts are made and what they're made from, they can always tell a story of the people that created them. The image on the left is a quilt from a quilter in Boykin, Alabama in the 1980s. Very poor community that has become very well known for its quilts that are made from scraps of leftover fabric and sewn together by hand to sell and make a small income for the household. 
The image on the right is of a Victorian crazy quilt that would have been made by very wealthy women using hundreds of different types of luxury fabric pieces with decorative embroidery stitches covering every single seam. These quilts are expressive acts of emotion, made nearly 100 years apart. One by Jessie Telfair, a black woman who was fired from her job for registering to vote as a young woman and years later wanted to show her remaining anger through her quilting. And one by Elizabeth Holmes, a strong supporter of Abraham Lincoln who wanted to show her admiration of the Union of the States and took the time to piece her name super huge within the quilt. It's not just only text that's used to communicate in patchwork quilts. The piecing together of fabric in particular designs has meant that quilting has a history of literally hundreds of different graphic designs known as quilt blocks. These are used by needleworkers to put designs or even messages into their quilts. And each quilt block design can have many different names depending on where in the world you are. And some of them have long established historical meanings too. So what's the plan for the Cheer Quilt Project? Well, I'm putting together at least seven workshops for local care homes, community centres and collectives of people who might not know anything about making quilts. I'm gathering volunteers for a local quilting task force, which I'm calling the Quilt Squad, to help me with the sewing together of donated patchwork pieces and spread the word about the project. I'll be giving out free quilt kits to local libraries and schools so that as many people in the area can get access to the knowledge and have a go themselves. And I'm going to organise a big quilting jamboree just like the old quilting bees with food, fabrics and quilting of patchwork activities for people to drop in and try on the day. The aim with this two month project is to get as many cheerful, colourful and personal celebration quilts made as possible across the winter and into January and February of next year. These quilts will say messages of joy, include fabrics and moments special to all the people who made them and be carried as banners, capes and even clothes to be walked in the procession on International Women's Day after they've been displayed for the week of the festival. The quilts will be donated to charities and used in a women's shelter and a baby care unit within the community afterwards. So nothing is going to go back in a box, get packed away, everything will be made to be of really good use afterwards. And the project is all about getting people together as well. One of the most important aspects of wanting to do this as a facilitator myself is to get people in the same room with one another, getting making something very easily and gently with their hands while they get to spend time together, get to know each other and talk about their experiences. So at the moment, the loose overall project timeline for this project is to get a bit of a soft launch in December, which I'm working on at the moment, and also putting together a mailing list of quilt enthusiasts who would like to form part of my quilting squad. Generally, that's anyone who likes a bit of sewing or wants to know more about patchwork and quilting and would like to be put on the mailing list for any extra kind of exclusive VIP small number fun activities that I might put on for those that are helping me with the project. And then in January and February, the hard work begins for everybody else. There's going to be community workshops and quilt kits dropped off to local libraries. I'm going to be putting on weekly sewing socials for, for people to be able to drop in and do some quilting themselves. And then by February the 11th, I'm going to be organising that big quilt making jamboree where, like I mentioned, there'll be food served. People will be able to learn how to patchwork on the spot. They can just drop in and do a little bit. They can stitch into the quilts that have already been made by some of my workshops and generally get a really good kind of family day out feel for the project. And then by March in next year, the Power of Women week, which is, I think, on the like second week of March, the quilts will be walked and worn and carried and kind of waved in the Saturday procession that's taking place and they'll also be displayed throughout the week and then at the very end they'll be auctioned or donated to raise funds for the festival and to provide useful blankets for charities. So what's in it for you? With this project you can learn how to patchwork and quilt in three or more ways. You can have some time to be creative or sew in company because I'm planning to put on free workshops with like loads of facilitation for all of the members of the quilt squad. You can learn how to organise workshops and, fund and funded projects if you're interested. If you'd like to know a bit more about the behind the scenes of putting something like this together, I'd be so happy to share my information. And you can also make some patchwork or quilted clothing and objects for yourself. My, my intention is to really get people into quilting if they've never done it before or get back into it if they've got a bit of experience and haven't picked up any patchwork in ages so every bit of this project is about getting the people who are taking part to have things that they can take away for themselves as well
You can get involved with local creative charity work and you can have access to all the free materials and the kit that I'm going to be providing. So some of the ways that you can get involved are to sign up to the quilt squad that I'm putting together this December. You can share the news of the project with others, support some of the workshops, or even you can run your own. I can help with organizing, preparing for these if you'd like to kind of facilitate something yourself. You can create your own patchwork or quilt just quietly on your own if it's something you'd like to do over the winter. You could encourage others to patchwork and quilt too. You can help with donations of fabric or materials because we're gonna need a lot of those. And you can volunteer to help on the day of the jamboree. Also, if you let me know any way that you'd like to get involved with the project, even if it's only with one tiny donation or a little bit of activity, let me know because I'd love to support and celebrate what you'd like to do. We're also collecting a whole load of materials for this project and they are, some of them are really unusual. I'm wanting to get some sheep fleeces. Yes, I know that sounds crazy, but I'm really fascinated with the idea of even making our own wadding for the quilts. I'd like to collect some old sports clothes with um, sporting logos like Adidas and Nike, because when I'm doing workshops with much younger people, I want to show them how the quilt can really be made out of stuff that they can relate to. I want to be collecting fabric of all colours, the brighter the better, and particularly cotton, so that we can use them for some baby... Um, baby cot quilts that are going to go into the premature baby unit in Margate Hospital. We're going to need a lot of threads and batting or wadding which goes on the inside of the quilts. Old cotton bed sheets um, or sheets in general are really useful. We can, draw, we can dye them bright colours and we can um, use them for the backs of our quilts. Any patchwork that you've already started that you'd like to donate we would love to have that and any quilt or tapestry frames that you might have on hand and haven't used for many years and don't want anymore we're looking for as many big wooden quilt frames that we can that we can stretch the quilt over ready for the big jamboree quilt making day so anyone that you know that's got a quilting tapestry or embroidery frame that they don't need we'd love to hear about it and then outside of that anything that you think will help I'm going to be running drop-off days um, in December and definitely January and February where people can just come to my studio and chuck a carrier bag in that I can sort through and add to the project so thanks for listening to the talk and don't forget, as a friend of the project, you can be available for as little or as much as you like. You might not know anything about sewing and not be very crafty yourself. That doesn't matter. Any little bit of kind of um, cheer and friendship and joining in some of the activities to whatever degree you're able is so welcome. If you don't have a lot of time, but you know that in the future you might like to stop into one or two of the socials, I'd love to hear from you still. So if you'd like to be added to the mailing list for this project, particularly with um, information about the um, quilt squad that's going to be coming up and um, going to be sending out like a calendar of events over December, January and February, please email me on zoe at zoemurphy.com or there's a handy little form at the bottom of this page that can, um, where you can put any information that you like or you can sign up. So thanks for listening. I can't wait to hear from you and I'm super excited about getting the whole of Thanet quilting and spending time together this winter and spring.